Okay, so this is my last bookcase. Um, it is next to my bed. I took off a bunch of stuff. Oh, I guess this I can, because this is, it is a book. Um, I took all the stuff off that's on it because this is actually, I mean, it's right next to where I sleep. So I use this a lot as like a, you know, bedside table. So there's a lot of random stuff that's usually on it. Um, but anyways, I've got some magazines up at the top and some like jewelry and other bits and bobs. Um, and then the the top, the beginning part of this is kind of like my anthology books um, and then my best American books. And then it goes into my literary journals and magazines, which I thought was a lot, but now I'm like, nah, eh, it's not that much. It's okay. <laughs> um, so this is the Everyman's Pocket Classics Love Stories. I don't actually know how this came to be in my possession I'm gonna assume a library book sale because I would I would not personally spend full price for a book like this and uh, then I've got three well I guess four um Hingston Hingston and Olson what the name what is that's not very helpful made in Canada um but I've got three three of these um the ghost box editions so let me this is gonna be kind of hard hey hey I guess we'll do We'll use the bed. Um, so does it have it on here? Yeah, Hingston and Olson Publishing. So I heard about this company, I don't remember from whom, but um, because they do these book, the ad, the short story advent calendars for um, Christmas time, I obviously am really bad at actually reading them, but that's okay. Um, but they also do these ghost box. And so um, it, they, I think they've stopped now at this point, but they were edited by Patton Oswalt. And so it's the same kind of thing where there's um, little stories in these little, booklets and I just think it's like a really beautiful packaging and um the whole like thing I think is a really nice object to have so um I am very pleased that I have those I'm sad I've missed out on like a couple of these and once they you know they don't publish old ones so it's kind of too late for me to get them and then I've got various like cartoons and zines and like weird small bits and bobs here um that I have not read but again why don't I just sit down and like read all of these really quick like just to put them not on this shelf anymore um, but anyways uh this is definitely from a library book sale so it's um the Paris Review book of for planes trains elevators and waiting rooms then we've got uh contemporary short stories from Central America which I bought for the Invisible Cities project because there's book oh wow there's <laughs> There's stories from um, Panama in here, which is why I purchased it. But there's, you know, different places. So Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Nicaragua, um, Guatemala, and Honduras. So that is fun. I haven't read that either. Um, then we have the Anchor Book of Modern African Stories, um, edited by Nadeza Obradovic. Um, I also clearly have not read this. Um, I, I'm going to assume I got this from a library book sale. Yeah, there's someone's name written in there because I don't really remember anything about this. Usually if I don't remember, it's because I bought it in a frenzy. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff in here that I don't know about. Um, and then this one I purchased at Wordstock, um, from this book publishing, the Chin Music Press. They do mostly, I feel like, um, like Japanese type things but I don't know why they did this this is like an anthology um for after um Katrina I'm pretty sure let's see who's going to rebuild and um yeah I'm pretty sure it's it's after um after Katrina like New Orleans and and all that kind of stuff then the fire this time by Jasmine Ward which I really need to read um these are from my dad's house this um we purchased from like an anti-fascist group um <laughs> Antifa uh in Italy I think we were in Modena there's like a big fascist obviously everyone probably knows there's a big fascist movement growing all over the world including in Italy Italy has historically not had great um political leanings um and there is like a, a big fascist movement growing and so um this is kind of like a non-fiction edited like essay collection and um comics obviously it's just in italian it's called combatti la paura which is uh fight the fear i guess um so i do also really want to read that um then this is from library book sale obviously would not pay full price for that either um some more 
with some more anthologies, the daily assortment of astonishing things. Um, this one I bought at Elliott Bay. Very excited about that. Um, oh my gosh. See, I guess this bookshelf, I do have more things to say about because I think these are more like interesting things that maybe people haven't heard of. Um, this one though, I definitely bought because of like British booktubers. Um, halal, if you hear me, um, this is, I think part of a series, the Breakbeat Poets volume three. So I think um, the different books have different, like are from different nationalities maybe. Um, so this is, I think like Arabic um, authors. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so being, so Muslim, I guess, so. And then these are the first ones. So American Poetry in the Age of Hip Hop and then Black Girl Magic. So I am very excited to also read this because uh, anthologies, that's how you find people, people. <laughs> um, and then I've got three of these. I've read one. Um, I read, gosh, what was the name of it? I don't remember off the top of my head, but these are from Two Lines Press, which is one of the um, book publishers that we did for the Indie Press Project when we were doing it. Um, so I've got these three and they're all anthologies focused on different things. So this one is Elemental. And I think, what is this one? Uh, let's see. Okay, so Japan, Iran, Madagascar, Iraq, Germany, and more. I'm not sure if this has like a specific theme or not. I'm sure it does because they usually do, but I, Earth Stories. Okay, well, that's easy. <laughs> and then this one is Home. So this one is New Arabic, Arabic, Arabic. Hmm, how does one say that? Um, anyways, Poems. And I think this is when they started doing side by side. So they have it in the Arabic and in English, which is really cool. I do not know how to speak Arabic, but that's okay. Um, and then this one is Queer. Um, so it's... Um, queer Brazil. So it's different stories from LGBTQ plus, you know, humans in Brazil. And this one also has um, the side by side. Um, when I first got it, I was like trying to read the Brazilian, which was hilarious because y'all, I don't know how to speak Brazilian, but I speak Spanish and Italian and some French. So I pretend like I can. Um, then I've got this literature from the Axis of Evil. I hate this title so much, but I purchased this I think to get for North Korea for the Invisible Cities Project. A lot of times the places that we do for the Invisible Cities Project don't have like a ton of books available, but there will be things like these where there's like an anthology that has multiple countries in it and then you can get some readings from those, but I haven't read them. And then these are definitely from library book sales, all of these ones and these ones and that. That's for my dad. These are from my dad's house. Um, I'm excited to read that. Haven't touched them. Projections is another Hingston and Olsen book. Um, this one I think is science fiction maybe. How do I open this one? Ooh. So it's again, the same kind of thing, but I just like, I think these are so beautiful and I want more of their books, but a girl needs to save money. So it's not happening right now. <laughs> um, these are clearly all library book sale books, library book sale. This I is not this. I've had this probably for 15 years and I have not read it. Um, and this is something that Jake purchased in Seattle, I guess in 2012. And you know, it's still on the shelves. Who's surprised? It's too tight. I can't get that back in with one hand. Um, this one I purchased in Italy. It's, you know, got some stuff. What's that? Library book sale for sure. Um, Bogota. 39 I purchased with an intent but I don't remember what it was I don't think it was for the Invisible Cities Project because I've had this one for a while it might have been like library or not library um indie bookstore day and so just something that I thought sounded interesting killer bees um this I'm pretty sure Carm sent this one to me too huh. yeah so uh he he wrote little notes and put them in the stuff so um, I have not read this either, but it's kind of more of like a reference book anyway, so I should probably put that with my reference books. Um, and then I've got a bunch of Best American series. I love these so much. Um, I've got some Best American essays, Best American mystery stories. Uh, Best American non-required reading is has been my favorite so far. So like these to me have had the best 
you know, pieces in them, uh, Best American Science and Nature writing, Best American Science Fiction writing, and then a bunch of Best American short stories. Most of these I purchase at library book sales, except for maybe like the more recent ones. Like this one, I think I purchased full price. Um, God, whenever we do Indie Bookstore Day, if I don't find something that I'm like, really, I want or need in this moment, then I usually will go for something like this, where it's like, I know that I want it, but may not might not be a book that I like need exactly. But you know, I'm, I'm on a quest. And then Best American Travel Writing. I think that one I purchased new too, but most of these I purchased for $2 at the library book sale. Um, and usually when I go to the library book sale, I go straight to this section <laughs> to, to get as many as I can. Then I've got a few issues of Fence. I have not read any of that. Just one issue of Freeman's Arrival. And most of these I also have purchased um, at library book sales. That's, again, the section that I go to because they're cheaper and there's a lot of them that I want to have. Oops, I just hit my phone. So why would I not do that? Um, a bunch of issues of Granta. Then I've got um, American Short Fiction. I, I'm pretty sure Marty gave these to me when she was clearing out her shelves. Um, Bone Shaker. This one I purchased at Indie Books, no, at um, Wordstock. Uh, the, the gentleman that puts these together was there. So it's basically uh, like a literary magazine, but it's all about bicycles, which is really funny. Um, I haven't read a bicycle, read, read. I haven't gotten on a bicycle in so long. Uh, this one I purchased in Ireland. So it's an Irish, um, literary journal. Um, so who knows if I'd even be able to get another edition of that if I wanted to. Uh, then I've got some issues of the Hedgehog Review. Um, the Iowa Review. I purchased this in Iowa. <laughs> um, Lamp Lampham's Quarterly. I haven't read any of these either. These are definitely from um, the library, uh, you know, uh, the book sale. The Master's Review. This one I think I purchased at um, at Wordstock too. And then I've got a bunch of McSweeney's. I obviously want all of them and it annoys me that I don't have all of them, but they do cost quite a bit of money. There's only so much that a person can do. I've got a few that should be able to get me started. I kind of, when it comes to these types of books where like there's so many, you know, so many copies of N plus one, so many copies of the Parish Review, it is really hard for me to buy them when I have all of these on my shelves unread because it's not like a series where you have to read one before two. So I should be able to read these whenever. So I, I don't really prioritize purchasing or adding anything to my shelves except for the ones that I'm um, currently subscribed to. So um, Jake is currently subscribed to New American Paintings. So we do get that. Um, I'm pretty sure it's quarterly as well. I am subscribed to N plus one, but you can see um, I had like tried to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to I'm going to fill out my collection. And so I just ended at four and then I was subscribed to it 19 through 20, let's say through 31. And then I stopped subscribing to it and then I resubscribed to it. So, um, there's gaps, but I will fill them out eventually. And then a possum. This is one that I got also at Wordstock and it has, um, a record in the back. So I don't know if they are still even doing anything, but it sounded really interesting to me. Then obviously I have the Paris Review. I subscribed to this. I'm going to say there's no way I've been subscribed to all of these. I'm trying to think. I mean, I must because it's pretty much, yeah, I guess I subscribed over here and then I, you know, purchased some of these at, at library book sales. Um, this also definitely, um, uh, word stock. And then I've got a public space, which I'm currently subscribed to, but I just subscribed to it recently. And I guess they only put out one a year, which is kind of confusing to me. I just got a new one right now and it's number 30 and I just read number 29. So maybe it's just one a year. And then my poetry magazines, which are like the things that annoy me the most that I need to read, get off my shelves. I don't want them taking up space to me. These are like a true magazine and not something that I want to save necessarily like these other ones. These to me are things that I need to read and then get rid of. So I would like to do that. Um, Portland Review, who knows? I've got some other stuff. What is that? Um, Pop Shop Quarterly. This also looks like, like a true magazine. So I don't know. I'm always like torn between saving things and, you know, getting rid of them to have space on my shelves. Um, then I've got Tin House, which I was subscribed to, but they um, finished, which is really, really sad. But they still publish books, so I think they're just focusing on their book 
Publishing. Then I've got some copies of um, TLR, which is the Literary Review, and Willow Springs, um, and Ziziva, which I am currently subscribed to as well. Um, and then I've got some Jacobin, which I'm also currently subscribed to. This is a, um, like, a socialist magazine. I don't know if socialist is the right word, but you know Jacobin. I will link their website. I'll, I'll link the websites for all of these below, actually. But this is another thing that I'm really, really embarrassed that I don't read because it is more of a true magazine and I should be reading it as they come out. Then I've got some other magazines. Let's see, Briar Patch which I'm subscribed to um, at a recommendation of someone who I like and I'm friendly with and can't remember her name right now. Um, then I've got Honest History, which is a magazine that my friend Brooke puts out. Um, yeah, so I just don't, don't really know, like, should one keep these? Um, these I definitely am not keeping, um, poets and writers, but I haven't like gone through these to look at them. And then I also am subscribed to Womankind magazine, which it's too much. It's too many subscriptions. I understand. Please don't judge me too much. Um, so yeah, those are the last of my unread things. And I do have most of these magazines on my Goodreads because to me, I just count everything and whatever. <laughs> That's how I do it. Um, I'll talk to you guys later.